Yes, my dear ones, you are able to see the ski lifts behind me, but the video might shock you customers and the community a bit, and it will get really juicy and exciting towards the end. Hence, one crucial thing holds significance for me at present. We have not been purchased. All of our test models have been paid for, and as a result, we are currently openly expressing our opinions on a wide range of topics. You can already guess from the title what awaits you. And yes, as I always say, our currency here are the subscribers. That means if you enjoy the video, kindly subscribe to it, simply skip the bell notification, and that's all. Please take our recommendations seriously, otherwise you will quickly have sunk a lot of money. And I can only encourage you to contemplate RoboSheep if you possess a somewhat more intricate garden. We will assess cleanly what works or what doesn't work. And if we are not near you, if RoboSheep does not have a standard yet, go to the reputable dealer you trust. It is simply not that simple. It is serious at certain times. And I sincerely wish you a great deal of fun with this highly critical video. Dear community, thank you for all the comments, especially about him, about the Segway. And the comments on the channel, they have now also prompted me to the following video. Just a heads up to all customers, but particularly to the retailers who are watching the channel regarding our current and proper handling procedures. I will shortly draw a comparison between the Segway Navimo and the Husqvarna 550 eBoss from the premium class. I know it's a bit unfair, but I think it's important to understand. But first of all, thank you for the comment that I'm displaying there. Yes, and you are right. That is safety critical. For this reason, please use the Segway at the moment on flat surfaces with even a slight incline. We will examine what occurs at a later time. What is the cause behind it? Thus, here we possess the 550 EPOS, a so-called generation four framework with a weight distribution that primarily places the weight on the drive wheels, which are likewise proportionally sizable and appropriately configured and with a broad stance at the rear. And we have the Segway. The manufacturer has built RTK. The manufacturer is good at RTK, but of course it's the first lawn robot. So we're talking about generation one in terms of weight distribution. The item in question is as heavy as a 55 EBOS, which is a specific type of equipment and it applies to an expansive area of 10,000 square meters. I think that says it all. The weight is in the front, the rear wheels are very narrow. It is simply heavy overall and therefore struggles on slopes. And what is currently safety critical at this point? What does my dear community colleague from the comments section mean? The wheel motors do not have a gearbox. And if this robot is currently appropriately decoupled on the slope, then it shoots down. I don't want to recreate that now because I don't want such sensational content. But if a slope property has even just 30%, a relatively large area, then this thing actually comes at you with its insane weight like a 40. And I don't think that's really funny at all. By the way, a super cool Segway installation just done yesterday. Please take a look at the overlay. Of course, putting the antenna on the roof is a bit of a challenge. If only the front lawn area had been done now, then a Solo Pro 2 system would of course be a thousand times more reliable, better and so on. However, in this specific case, it is about crossing the driveway and the two rear areas of the property. This will work great. Look at the open sky and the satellite reception and flat as a pancake, that's how it should look at this moment if you want it to really work. Sven, the mowing robot who loves threads, is featured in the newspaper, hit and run incident. Let me inform you, under no circumstances should a lawn robot be on the road, it is imperative to avoid hit and run situations. In the wired systems, if you have maintained a proper distance, it has simply been shown over the years that the reliability is high enough. This happens wirelessly to you immediately. And therefore, what is stated in the user manuals, please also applies to the 550 eBoss, and with him highly serious from Husqvarna, very prominently inside, 15 centimeter mechanical obstacle to swimming pools, to roads, to garden ponds, but especially to public roads. And with the Segway, it's a bit more reserved inside. If you don't have that, mechanical obstacles to anyone, something that wants to be dangerous. 
It's not about hit and run like with Sven, it's about your neck as a specialist dealer, quite clearly. Wireless systems at present require a mechanical demarcation to be implemented in hazardous areas. So much for my clear warnings. Let's now take a brief look at how this weight distribution in the moment of the Generation 1 chassis affects us in driving in smaller steep terrain. So, on to the final conclusion about Segway. And then he has to move away from the area. Why, you will see in a moment. So let's take a quick look around. He's driving up there on the edge. So here I am. Oh, the neighbor at Hetty 436, fully operational and prepared to go. And I made an effort to mow relatively closely in this particular area where he is currently driving in edge mowing mode. You can already see all the stones down there, which are present. And yes, let's take a quick look in the playback at what unfortunately occurred there. A few leaves, a little more vegetation, it is growing a little, and once again we have a search image. Camera number two, camera number three. Concluded in a backward manner, the area of lawn located at the topmost part of my property. It is currently very nicely mowed, as one would anticipate from a blade cutting unit. Usually there is a completely loaded shaft running in that location, delivering something entirely different from a blade cutting unit, but that is simply the way it is. That is what is inside nevertheless. The tracks, to put it mildly, do not appear to be in a particularly bad condition. My difficulties are unfortunately starting to arise a bit now on the slope. Yes, and then we come to a point that I can't really live with anymore which is becoming increasingly problematic for me. Let's take a look at that using the clinometer. It has a ridiculously steep incline that is hard to believe. And what the robot is performing there with its Generation 1 chassis. So, he has to move away from this lawn area, otherwise my most expensive lawn area will be ruined. So he's coming down there now to mow along the edge of this lawn, and we have a bit of a tricky RTK to follow. And now let's take a look at the wheels. Let's see what happens. Yes, he's trying to drive around this curve. So the robot is unable to handle this curve and it is attempting to return to the line. And you have the capability to already perceive in this particular process precisely what has been transpiring all throughout this entire duration of time. He is turning in the wrong direction once again in order to get up. Yes, he is still trying to get back to the line, persistently and determinedly. This is currently happening in real time, and I am fully aware that it may be a bit long-winded in terms of its length. However, what should I do? Yes, that is the thing when you win excessively. That, my dear friends, is not fake. So, my beloved ones, because I have been creating robots, I have not witnessed the events that are taking place in close proximity to me. And accordingly, for now, on my priciest lawn area, which is closely monitored for this purpose, this test is finished. During the following week, Stig is planning to move into the new place. The address where Stig will be residing is 1500A. A, as I refer to it, Generation 4 chassis. And in the current moment, we can anticipate a slightly higher level of performance from it compared to previous versions. As good as the idea was, as nice as the application is, as well as the real-time kinematics is done, it falters with the chassis, and that is just how it is at the moment. So you stay low, you keep GPS open, and then it is working with the Segway at the moment, and if there is anything new, you will hear from me. I'll make sure to keep you updated.